I'm here with Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Peter, let's talk about the uh, Democrat debates, the first the first group of uh, of Dems. For this week. For this, for this week. week. Yeah. And uh, tonight, we'll, we'll have the second uh, round. So the the lead story on Drudge is a picture of Elizabeth Warren uh, with CNN in the background. And the title is Clash of the Libs! Exclamation point. Peter, what did you think of uh, this round? Well, I think it was totally expected. OK, I think uh, that we're going to see. Um, the, we, we'll, it was on display, the polarization within the party, um, the, the left uh, progressives. And uh, then we have uh, the moderates trying to make some kind of uh, uh, push back. I mean, pull back from the cliff, because that's exactly what we have uh, uh, on display. What was really interesting, um, at least on that debate, who, who did well? Uh, Elizabeth Warren certainly did well. Bernie, I think that's a toss up. I think Bernie has really lost the veneer of 2016 a lot. OK, he sounds like a hectoring old man and, and and almost kind of passe. I mean, what he was saying in 2016 was important to a lot of people because it was very different. Now it's not so different. It's very stale. I mean, his his shelf life, I think, is over. Um, Delaney did very, very well. He was trying to capture the center. And um, he could, I mean, listening to him, he could be a member of Trump's cabinet. I mean, um, really, I, I, I don't think they really have much. Well, certainly they don't have much self-reflection. OK, so that was really quite extraordinary to me. Um, uh, CNN as the moderators. Well, they're just fluff. So, I mean, we didn't get anywhere. I mean, I really what bothers me about it. Of course, the, their politics are ridiculous. But we have to remember a couple of things. This is for the Democratic caucus, OK? And they don't realize that the American people, if they take any interest in them, at least 60 million of them, if they turn it, tune in, they're going to be completely, completely put off, all right? Um, and, but we have to remember this is within the caucus itself. So that's why we're gonna, we're gonna, we see this polarization. Everybody wants to stand out, OK? Well, Beto didn't, <laughs> no surprise there. Buttigieg didn't do well at all. His star is faded. Um, who did? Uh, who really did the, uh, the best out of all of this? Joe Biden did because the the moderates were making a push back. So Joe Biden, not by by not being there, it gave him a push. All right, for sure. Um, Elizabeth Warren, Warren on her own merits, she's strong. She's very strong. Okay, and her who she's going to have to really take on is not Biden, not yet. She's going to have to take on Camilla Harris. That's who she has to worry about right now. Um, Joe, Joe Biden, you know, Mr. Flip Flop, I mean, really the quintessential. I mean, we really don't know what he stands for. OK, he's going on name recognition and name recognition only. I mean, he's terrible on the campaign. If Camilla Harris uh, uh, gets in the ring with him uh, tonight and wins, then he may be finished. OK. I mean, because she's coming out very strong. She, she's a very angry person. She represents that wing of the party that's very angry. Really, what was on display so far? This is the third debate. What's on display? Who's, a wo who's woke? That's what it's all about. Who's woke? Well, I, that doesn't play in the heartland. Okay, that's not going to win you Michigan. That's not going to win Minnesota for you. It's not going to win Illinois or Indiana. Wokeness doesn't, we don't care about that. We care about results. So this uh, virtue signaling and this wokeness is, it is just a path to defeat. And, and if they continue down this path, if they cannot pull back from the cliff, the Republicans are going to have a good year next year. And I mean in Congress as well. So th th this is really what's at stake here. The American people, the electorate, don't see wokeness fixing anything. All right. And these are the terms and conditions of the Democratic debate right now. Now, I mean, if, if I were the, uh, the Trump camp, I would say they had a good night watching these people because it, it just doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever on any level. They're, they're, they, they're all weak, really, on policy. And Bernie Sanders, I'll give him credit. He knows a lot about health care, but he keeps using examples around the world that are not they're not bolstering his case. OK, they're hurting his case. Now, yeah, Scandinavia. Perfect, yeah. yeah, well, even Canada, too. OK, if you look at the waiting lines, OK, it is free, but you have to wait a long time. I think the, well, the average wait was something like 18 weeks. That's a long time if you're sick. All right. Now, I'm not advocating one health plan over another. OK, I, I'll be really honest with our viewers. I'm very, very far away from it. OK, because I have health care here living in Russia. OK, so 
And I'm not advocating Russia's uh, uh, system for the United States. I'm, the United States has to figure out what it needs to do for itself. But certainly it's not working. OK, I mean, the very fact that some Democratic candidates on the far left, they want to take health care away from people. You can wrap your head around that. They want to get rid of private health care. They want to take it away. I thought that they, they, the whole point of these people was to give every way and give everything free to everyone. All right. Also, the, the, the case on immigration, it's a, it's a non-starter for the for the, the uh, at least half the country, half the country uh, crossing the border is an illegal offense. Again, it should remain that way. All right. That doesn't get any traction in the heartland at all. OK, it's the coast. They talk about it. The media it talks about it. But it, for the average person, one thing I will I'm, I'm tracking and, and watch, I want to see the result, what these minority voters, what they're thinking, reacting to this ridiculous circus rhetoric. OK, because leftist policies have not helped minorities. OK, it hasn't helped them. It has actually been a hindrance. OK, what you do is you create this dependency on the state. And this is what the these progressives want to do. They want to create even more dependency. And then when you have dependency, you have no agency. When you have no agency, you're captured, okay? And this is what the, the, um, the Republicans need to hone away at, all right? Because listening to, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't watch the whole thing. Okay, <laughs> why should I waste that part, you know, three or four hours of my life? Um, but um, what, what, the, the message that's being sent out is not inclusive, it's exclusive. And I think this is, people are gonna pick up on that. So um, good night for Joe Biden. And like I said, he wasn't even there. <laughs> so, so would you say, Peter, that it's now probably shaping up to a three-person race, Biden, Harris, Warren, and maybe a fourth person? I'll throw it out, out there. Maybe Hillary Clinton. Maybe well, announces something you know, in October. It, it, we we've all said this, okay, and 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 you know, the, and if if this is Hillary's strategy, it's probably the only thing smart thing she's ever done in her ridiculously fraudulent life. Okay, is to wait to the very end. Um, I, I think as I think if someone like Harris or Warren uh, were to to uh, make it to the the finish uh, um, finish place. I think that it would be pretty hard for, for Hillary to, to push them aside, okay? I think it, it would really be the case. If, if Biden were somehow to be able to do it, I think she would fight him because there's, no, uh, there's bad blood between them, that's for sure. He didn't run because the, the Democratic Party pushed him aside for her, and she lost, okay? She tried twice, and she lost twice. So I think we can't discount Bernie still, but, you know, he's, he's, his flame is, coming, is going out, okay? He just missed his moment. He missed his moment. And he has to blame the Democrats for it, for stealing it from him, okay? Not anybody else. Let's never forget DN that. The DNC stole that. it from Bernie. And I'm willing to uh, claim I, it would have been a dead heat. It, uh, I, Trump would have had a real competition with Bernie, okay? Because his rhetoric was fresh. He was, had a strong appeal for first-time voters. But he missed the wave. He missed the wave. And, and, and... You know, to really kind of hammer down on the point here, I mean, he sounds more and more moderate as we go through this. And, and so, you know, it, 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 the, the luster is moving in a different direction. I have to say, uh, Elizabeth Warren, she's good. She's good at what she does, okay? I think her policies are nuts, okay? But she's more grounded in reality than, than most of them. But Delaney proves my point. Sanity is what people are attracted to. He had a very good night, but I don't think he has a, you know, a... a a, a, a hope, a, 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 a snowball's a, a chance in hell to win, okay? But it's going to remind a lot of voters that there are people in the Democratic Party that think a lot more rationally. So it's, uh, uh, you know, it was a circus, and we'll see how the next round goes in the next few hours, and we'll be, you know, about this time tomorrow, we'll be commenting on that one. All right, I'm going to get this video up very quickly. So, Peter, what are you looking at for tonight's debate? Is there anything that stands out outside of Biden, say, Biden has. Well, well I, I, what I think is that these these uh, these moderates uh, are in collusion to take out these these uh, uh, progressive left people. OK, the Delaney's and whatnot, the mystic woman, whoever. I don't even remember her name. Um, but Williamson. She's not memorable to me. OK, I mean, I was waiting for her to roll out to, you know, one of those yoga pads and, do, you know, start bending around in front of everybody. OK, well, she's, you know, again, rubbing beads or something. But um um, I, I, it really what they want to do is they, early in the game, they want to they they kind of um, 
eliminate um, the, the, the most extreme. And I think that's what they want to do is kind of push it together where it looks like there's a, still a real choice. Because I think there is a recognition now that this is, this is a, tr a train wreck on the far left. A train wreck. All right. So would that mean? Um, uh, but but I, I think the Democratic Party wants a woman. I, I think they really want a woman. OK, I think they want a, uh, a female presidential and vice presidential ticket. They want two women. To, I think that's what they want. I think that's what they want. They think they can win on that. All right. So who, who will it be? Will it be Harris and Warren? I think that's probably the most likely combination that they're trying to push for. So. You know, she's the she's you know you you have the hard cop, the good cop, and the bad cop. Harris is the bad cop. Warren's the good cop. <laughs> wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? Well, it's, yeah. I mean, as from a strategist point of view, it's not a bad it's not a, a bad ploy. But uh, you know, I'm still thinking that Pence, Pence is going to be bounced, and I think um, uh, we're going to have uh, what's her name, uh, um, Nikki, Nikki Haley. Haley, as vice president. I'm, I've been saying this for a while. You know yeah, that. I know. Okay? I know that. Bump pants, I, I do not her. want to see that. That I do not want to see. Not that but Pence th is, that is anything is, super, but. No, but what, that, what, what Trump is going to play a Trump card. All right? That's what he's going to do. I would like you that heard Trump it here first? I would like that Trump card to be Tulsi Gabbard, but I know that's an impossibility, but still. Oh, <laughs> man. You know. My, I'm, I'm just shattered by by what's happening to her. I mean, there's again, she it, uh, remember Ron Paul, you know, they they, they, they cast him. As, he won the uh, Iowa um, uh, uh, caucus. He won it. OK, after the fact that they in the final final vote, he won it. But the, the mainstream media wouldn't accept him. Bernie Sanders got got uh, uh, thrown under the bus. OK, and then and now I'll tell see, you know, someone that has something really meaningful to say. Now, you and I and a lot of people watching this wouldn't agree with most of what she has to say on domestic policy, social policy. But on foreign policy, she's spot on. I mean, she says it better than anyone else. And she says it with authority. And she uh, has a presence to her that none of the other ones do. Watch her interviews. She knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's talking about. She's been there. She's done it. All right. I agree with you. I agree with you. And we'll leave it at that. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. Please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon. And we are now on Subscribestar as well. And please go to the Durant shop. Pick up some merchandise. Help this channel out. It really, really helps support this channel so we can broadcast to you wherever we are in the world. Whether it's Moscow. What's the what's the weather like in Moscow right now? Rainy and overcast. All right. Over here, it's plus 40, plus a gazillion <laughs> right now. So, hey, not bad. All right. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody. Take care.